City planning is so important to the proper functioning of a city, something we often take for granted. On this channel, I'm seeking to review city planning, figuring out just what's right and what's wrong about the ways in which our cities have been built. Today, we're going to be talking about just how important it is to accurately name train stations on a network, comparing my home city of Sydney with a city I visited quite frequently. Singapore. One city succeeds at naming its stations. The other has a little bit of work to do. In this video, we're going to find out why. Welcome to Building Beautifully. Train stations have been around as long as trains have been running. Naming a train station is important because it offers commuters the best means by which to try to figure out which station is closest to their destination. There are four naming conventions which every train planner should follow. First of all, generally, the best way to name a train station is to name the station after the town that it is in. Second of all, if that town has more than one station, the other station could simply have a qualifier added to it, like East, West, Upper, Heights, or anything to distinguish the other station. Third of all, when you're in a CBD itself, or other densely populated areas, often there's many, many stations in a very tight space. So this is when you want to give station names after nearby landmarks. Often this includes nearby streets or nearby buildings. Fourthly and finally, often the biggest station on the network has a special name reserved for it, such as Central. Follow these naming conventions and it's happy days. Commuters will be able to go where they want to, easily. Sydney has a massive train system. It has 170 stations spread out over 8 different lines as well as 13 metro stations spread out over the one metro line currently running through Sydney. With so many stations in Sydney spread out over such a massive area, it's inevitably difficult to name the stations. But Sydney succeeds at this. First of all, almost all stations are named for the suburb that they are in. You see, for those international viewers watching, Australia divides its localities into suburbs. Sydney has 658 of these suburb subdivisions. Generally, stations are named accordingly. Auburn Station is in Auburn, Eastwood Station is in Eastwood, and Edgecliff Station is in Edgecliff. Indeed, out of these 170 stations, there are only 19 stations that don't have the same name as the suburb that they are in. These stations fall into four categories. Four of these stations are named after their locality, even though this locality isn't officially a suburb. So these station names aren't actually that confusing, I've just included them as technicalities. There's Green Square Station, which is in Alexandria. King's Cross Station, which is in Potts Point. McDonald Town Station, which is in Everly and Flemington Station, which is in Homebush West. Yes, it might shock some Sydney viewers to learn that Flemington isn't a suburb and hasn't been since 1975. Six stations are officially located in the suburb of Sydney. You see, Sydney itself is a suburb which encloses the entire business heart of Sydney. There's Circular Quay Station, which serves Circular Quay, a ferry terminal near the Sydney Opera House. Wynyard Station, which is in an area called Wynyard, Martin Place Station, which serves the pedestrian mall that it is named for, St. James Station, which is named due to its proximity to the St. James Church, Town Hall Station, which is named after Town Hall sitting above the station, and Museum Station, which serves the Australian Museum. On top of this, seven stations have different names to their suburb simply because there is another station in the suburb already named after the suburb itself. There's a MacArthur Station, which is in Campbelltown. Campbelltown Station is a bit further north. There's also the International Airport Station and Domestic Airport Station, 
both of which are in Mascot. Mascot Station is a bit further north. There's East Richmond Station, which is in Richmond. Richmond Station is a bit further west. There's Hills Showground Station, which is in Castle Hill, with Castle Hill Station a bit further east. There's Macquarie University Station, which is in Macquarie Park. Macquarie Park Station is a bit further east. And there's Leightonfield Station, which is in Villawood. Villawood Station is a bit further west. Finally, there are two stations which fit into none of these three groups. Central Station, the biggest station in Sydney, is located in Haymarket. And Olympic Park Station is located in Sydney Olympic Park. Yes, this one's a bit of a technicality. The suburb is officially called Sydney Olympic Park, but for some reason the station doesn't have the word Sydney in it. Sydney wins at naming its stations where so many other cities fail. Commuters know exactly where they're going when they are in Sydney, because there's almost no ambiguity. Stations are pretty much always named for where they are. There are, however, two examples of poorly named stations. Museum Station, which I mentioned earlier, is honestly not that close to the Australian National Museum. Town Hall Station, which is a bigger station, isn't that much further a walk anyways, so most people will probably just go there. Also, just outside of Sydney's urban limits, there is a station called Hawkesbury River in the town of Brooklyn. Now, considering this is a 120 kilometer long river, you do have to admit the name Hawkesbury River is quite vague. What part of the Hawkesbury River does the station serve? Who knows? But hey, I can forgive two slip-ups out of hundreds of stations in Sydney. Because, as you will soon see, there is a city that has far, far more slip-ups than that. That city is Singapore. The city-state of Singapore is a country I've been to many times, given my family is Singaporean Indian. It's like a second home to me. A second home with one of the densest metro networks in the world, called Mass Rapid Transit, or MRT. It has 127 stations spread out over eight different lines. Singapore is about half the size of Sydney, so even though it has less stations as a whole, it has a higher density of stations. This already makes naming difficult, since stations are quite close together. And it isn't helped by the fact that Singapore doesn't have suburbs like Sydney, but rather planning areas. There's only 55 planning areas, as opposed to Sydney's 658 suburbs, so these are clearly quite, quite bigger than suburbs. For example, the Bordeaux planning area has six stations alone, and it isn't even the CBD of Singapore. These all lend themselves to some complications. With such big town subdivisions, each with about an average of four MRT stations, it's hard to just name stations after their town, meaning Singapore can't really follow my first rule. As a result, most of the time Singapore must follow my second rule, adding geographic qualifiers to the station name. Admittedly, it doesn't do too bad a job. For example, the Woodlands planning area has the Woodlands North MRT, Woodlands South MRT, and the Woodlands MRT stations. But when the planning areas have so many stations, you can't just whack on a North, South, East, and West every time you're in trouble. So Singapore has to resort to my third rule quite often, naming stations after nearby landmarks or roads, such as Stadium Station, which serves the stadiums in the Singapore Sports Hub. And sometimes they don't even do this. They just name their stations willy-nilly. Let's begin going through some examples. For starters, there are several stations that I feel have poorly chosen names for inexplicable reasons. Esplanade MRT is named after the nearby Esplanade theatres on the bay. Problem is, the theatres are a nine-minute walk from the station. Dakota MRT is only called this because it's near the former Kalang Airport, where Dakota DC-3 aircraft used to land. The area itself isn't even called Dakota. At least some of the streets there are named for the MRT as well. Downtown MRT is located in the downtown core of Singapore. 
The problem is, the downtown core of Singapore is quite big, and there's almost 10 other MRT stations in it. So, who exactly chose this name? 6th Avenue MRT is nearby to 6th Avenue. However, a more unique name such as Eng Nyo Avenue or Turf Club Road probably would have worked a bit better. Tan Ka Ki MRT is located underneath the Hua Chong Institution and is named after the founder of Hua Chong Institution, Tan Ka Ki. But Tan Ka Ki isn't a place, and I doubt everyone knows who he is. So why not just name it Hua Chong MRT or something else that would make it very clear where the MRT actually is? Kranji MRT has a bit of a misleading name, since it primarily serves the Singapore Turf Club, as opposed to the town of Kranji in general. Marina Bay MRT Okay, I can't actually fault Singapore for this one. This station opened in 1989, named for the Marina Bay area. Unfortunately, many years later, the Marina Bay Sands Hotel opened, and became the most iconic tourist attraction in Singapore by far their equivalent of Sydney's Opera House. Unfortunately, Marina Bay MRT isn't actually that close to the hotel. It's actually a good kilometre away. Bayfront MRT is the station you want to get off at. This is very confusing for tourists. On top of this, there's two sets of MRT stations that perhaps could be confused for each other. Farrah Park MRT is on the northeast line, but just 5 kilometers away on the Circle Line is the completely unrelated Farrow Road MRT. How confusing is that? Surely an alternative name was possible for either of these stations. Marina South Pier is a current station on the North South Line, but under construction on the Thompson East Coast Line is the Marina South MRT station. Apparently Singapore hasn't learned their mistakes from the Farrow Park and Farrow Road situation. Beyond me why, frankly. At least they're super close together, so going to one instead of the other isn't too major a problem. And finally, there's at least four MRT stations that aren't even where they're named for. God knows why. Clark Key MRT is just dumb. It's located on the complete wrong side of the river to where Clark Key actually is. Paya Leba MRT isn't even in Paya Leba. It's a good four kilometers south. Pioneer MRT isn't even in Pioneer. Enough said. And Boon Lay MRT isn't even in Boon Lay. Need I really continue? Honestly, I shocked myself by finding as many confusing names as I did. I probably could keep going, but I have to stop at some point. Singapore unfortunately fails on my fourth rule completely, to give the largest station a special name, because its biggest station is just randomly called Dobby Gort. But to be honest, Singapore's circle radial system means it doesn't really have a central station like Sydney. I might touch on that in another video. Singapore has an amazing metro system, one I envy when compared to my home city of Sydney. But frankly, they have a lot of work to do when it comes to naming their stations. Naming stations is important. It's easy for locals to adjust to inaccurately named stations. But for tourists from different areas of a city, or even a different city altogether, it's absolutely pivotal for them to know exactly where they're going, and that can only be done with accurate train station names. A station is the gateway to an area. It can offer many the first impression of where it is that they go. And it's up to transport planners to make sure that first impression is as accurate and as perfect as possible. If you like this video, please do consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching.